So as usual, I was scrolling Twitter and I saw you guys talking about concept art when it comes to side order. Now, I know that a lot of things were brought up from like, you know, Famitsu and just even the original trailer. If many of you guys don't know this, a lot of people bring up the fact that the old trailer was eerie. It was dark. It was a little bit different. And for a lot of people, they think that there was actually a shift with the development of the game. And for me personally, I love Side Order. I've been playing it a lot. I've been going back through it again. And I'm one of the people that actually have been enjoying the replayability of it. Now, a lot of people were hoping for more. And I actually do understand that I get it. I understand that a lot of people were looking for more lore. I am not the biggest lore driven person and I'm perfectly fine with that. A lot of the times, and yes, I'm being very honest with you, I can be spoiled and perfectly fine with what I get. And I just like the journey. That's me. And I understand for others, they would like more lore from Splatoon. One of the biggest things that I will say is Splatoon out of any other game, please Nintendo, give them a spinoff. I know that you guys think that the multiplayer aspect is the biggest part. No, people love the world of Splatoon. I think it's time for them to realize that there is a possibility in a, in a world where we can have both a story mode Splatoon and a multiplayer Splatoon, because obviously the combination of the two are just not enough. Now, I saw this tweet from Soul that said, do Splatoon fans actually know what concept art is? Or are you all convinced Nintendo is hiding Side Order 2 from us? It's called concept art for a reason. There's no underlying lore we're being left out on. It literally doesn't exist anymore. And yeah, that's I, I would have to agree. It is concept art. That That is how it is. Now, do I blame people for being hopeful for concepts? No, this is something that's been like, you know, a part of gaming just in general. People get concepts all the time and run wild with them. If you just go on YouTube, you can see so many theories and little things like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Now, is there a conversation about people in like possibly overconsumption? That might be it. But I did see this tweet from Arden that actually said, I'm going to be honest, as dumb as it is to be overly upset over side order scope, this whole do Splatoon players know what concept art means is just as annoying. You can still be disappointed after seeing what could have been, even if you understand concept art is just that. And I, I definitely agree. There are things that I look at for other games where I'm just like, dang, that would actually have been cool if they did that. There was all of last week no, or weeks ago where people were talking about Spider-Man 2 and like how they were going to have breakable walls and like, you know, the boss could throw you all over the place. And it just never ended up being in the main game. These things happen. So they continued and said, especially since this is not just a side order of things, Splatoon always suffered from too little resources for single player content since it's multiplayer focus. And if people expressed a desire for larger scale campaigns, that's actually a good thing to let Nintendo know. I wholeheartedly agree. I, I really do. I think we're at a point now that it's become more evident that people want single player Splatoon. I think that they should go that route and I think they should definitely do more with that. Now, there is a part of this that like, I think there are a lot of people that are hoping for more with Splatoon 3. And I'm gonna be honest with you, we are coming close, very, very close to the end of that update cycle. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen. I guess people were hoping that like, you know, with Koshin, they were gonna have Nogami come up and maybe he'll say something. And then there's gonna be even more copium with Worlds. And we hope that like, you know, maybe they'll say something there, but it's just gonna go on and on and on. And as I said, I think that one of the biggest things is the comparison of Splatoon 2 to Splatoon 3. There is the, like, obviously Splatoon 3 has more content, but it's more about what people deem as the content that they really love about Splatoon. And hopefully Nintendo realizes that. I don't know. Do I think that side order was underwhelming or anything in that, like, space? No, I, I think it's one of the best campaigns that they've done. You can say that it's the second best. I, as I said, I'm still going to plan on doing a review I'm just trying to understand the game as much as I possibly can and just look more into it. And I have to go back and play Octo Expansion on top of that. But as I said, I think that we're we're at a point now where people are, they're, they're looking for more for this game. And I do think that the game gave a lot. I think that it's just more of the comparison of what is going on right now. But you tell me what you think. Do you think that the concept should have been used a little bit more? Or are you on the side that it's the concept art and that's really it? Like it's it's concept art. And yeah, that's all it is. I just don't think that there's a problem with people talking about it and people theorizing about it. That's really it. But as you guys know, I'm always scrolling Twitter. So make sure to like, comment, and please subscribe, guys. I need you guys to subscribe. And yes, I do see your tweets. And I did see the tweet where Kenna tweets. They actually said, 
I'd like to talk about how this video predicted the future. And this is from, I believe their name is DTM. I'm not exactly sure. Sorry, Dan TDM. That's what I meant to say. But I unlocked the best gun in the game. And that is a that is a ten attack. You can't you can't trick me. I see it off rip. It's pink. I like the, the one that we're talking about a shot. And yes, I do see your tweet. So if you do at me, yes, I, I most likely will see it. But yeah, no, that 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 that's a ten attack. You can't trick me. So one of the interesting things is Splatoon Online. It's a very wonderful place. And I, I got a chance to play this past weekend. And I will tell you that this online is onlining. Now, I have to show you guys this clip because this is absolutely insane. Yes, as you see, the whole structure just moved and changed and <laughs> put itself out of position. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what's going on. I think that's a first for me. Has anybody ever seen this before? I have never seen anything like this happen with like the actual object in itself moving, but hey, that's just me. Let me know what you think. You guys know how I always say that Nintendo hates money. Well, and I understand that some events happen and they give out rare items. I get it, but Nintendo always and forever will hate money because they did their Koshin event. And in that Koshin event, they had the name tags that I talked about a while ago. And they actually said, this was from Komodo that tra was translating it. The people who won the Koshin in Japan get an exclusive banner and name tag. Only eight of these will exist. Yes, this is basically one of the most rarest platoon items that you can actually find. Like not even a joke. It's one of the rarest because nobody else will be able to get the, the nameplate. And to be honest, I think a lot of people would actually really like this. It would be like one of the weird things if somebody ever pilled up their keychain and they're like, ah, oh, that's a Splatoon fan. But hey, Nintendo hates money and that's just how it goes. And I just do not understand why they hate money. One thing I've realized over the years is that sometimes some people just don't realize who they're speaking to. One of the funnier things is when somebody's expressing themselves and telling you that something is wrong, sometimes maybe you should just listen. Now, somebody like Hideki Naganuma, who's made a lot of bangers throughout the years, put this tweet out and people were trying to tell him otherwise. In Japan, there's a term called black company. It means a company that exploits its employees through illegal or poor working conditions. There is also a tendency to attach the word black to anything bad. We need to change our values that white is clean, black is evil. Now, there were a lot of people in his comments, and I will show all of these comments all over the place because why? And sadly, there were people undervaluing what he was saying. Now, a lot of people may not understand this or understand who this person is when it comes to their influence on just music in general. One of the biggest things that a lot of people will never understand and when they try to argue about this is, yeah, this guy actually knows and looks and researches about these things. Why? Because as this person put in their tweet exactly, breaking news, guy who samples Malcolm X in his music is woke, his fans upset. And many of you guys that do not know this, Sonic Rush, if you listen to this song in the background, you just don't have this for no apparent reason. When I was a kid, I looked for this and I was like, yo, why is it saying that in the background? Because I was younger when I, when I first got to play this game. And I was like, oh, that's Malcolm X. Now, if you understand who Malcolm X is, you would understand that this person is speaking from a place that they understand why they do it. I'm sorry to tell you, if you haven't noticed, I am a black person and I'm very open about talking about these things. So if, as you know, if you feel offended by it, I am sorry, but I will speak openly about these things. And yes, they have used black as a way to hurt us. It is just something that has gone on for years. So when people speak, please listen. And I don't understand why this has to be an issue always in gaming, why? So a magical moment happened on Twitter yesterday and one of, I guess a Tekken player was trying to get Katsuhiro Haruda's actual intention to try to get Waffle House into Tekken. I don't think people actually understand this or know that people have been trying to say that Waffle House has been deserved to be in Tekken for years. It's a, a very big part of, a, of, of American history, if you guys actually don't know about it. It's uh, not that the food is good, not that like anything else. It's mostly that fights take place there. And that's one of the biggest reasons. It's one of the biggest chains that people know that you will get beat down if you decide to go there and start a problem. It's either that or Popeye's. But people know Waffle House as being the number one. 
So somebody said, Mr. Haruda, can you please add this stage to Tekken 8, please? And funny enough, they actually responded and said, okay, I will only ask once about this request. Why do some communities send me requests for Waffle House? Please be sure to explain the basis for the request, including the original story, history, and background. I look forward to an explanation from someone who knows more. And that's actually insane that they actually like, you know, responded to this. For a lot of people, they've been waiting and hoping that something like this will happen. They gave their explanation and said basically this. Thanks for the explanation, guys. And I understand that many people are requesting it. However, I think you are missing one important point. The restaurant has both the trademark and the rights to the restaurant. So if the restaurant chain's headquarters refuses to accept my proposal, it will not happen. I can't actually see Waffle House not accepting this. I, I feel like this is probably the most positive branding that they get in my opinion, but what do you think? Do you think that something like this would actually happen? Do you even care if it does? But hey, I think it's kind of dope. And for our last topic of the day, nobody was going to bring this up. There is a game by the name of Spine. And one of the things that I will have to say is I absolutely love these parry type like beat em up games. Yeah, I, Sifu, absolutely love it. Batman, the Arkham series, absolutely love it. And I'm just going to say right now that if this is anything like that, I will absolutely love this. I will absolutely cherish it. All the games that are, you know, have these great counter systems and just mostly it is just fun beat em ups. I really can't wait to give this a try because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of all of these type of things. Now, I will say that they actually have some type of gunplay with it, which is definitely different in, in my opinion, maybe like, you know, something a little bit more unique with it but let me know what you guys think and if you guys are going to give this a try let me know but i'm going to catch you guys later have an amazing day peace out